this video is going to be the start on actually kind of replicating lobby info. Now, what I want to kind of, well, my thought process on this is to create a structure, and that structure, will, at least for now, will contain the map image as well as an array of f strings, which are the player names. So, I kind of want to think about how we want to set this up because every time a player joins, we want to, we already know that the host beacon gets updated on it. So we can get the username and all that kind of stuff. And then we want to tell the clients that, okay, a new player has joined. Here's his name. And, it, you know, update it. Well, each time a new player joins, we don't necessarily want to keep resetting that structure that contains, you know, the map image or the map, um, oh, what do you call it? Like the map name and all that kind of stuff. Instead, we would probably want to just limit it to just that array of player names getting sent and vice versa. So when the map gets updated, we, won't, we don't want to send the updated player. Well, we don't want to send in the player array because it's going to be the same. It hasn't changed. So for now, we're just going to leave it as one structure that gets sent. And then later on, we will improve it. So we look at our game instance base here. We already kind of created one of these structures, but for the map. Now this contains obviously every info we need related to the map. What we want is simply the map image. So we're going to create our own structure inside of the host object that contains everything that we want to pass in. So for now, it's just the map image and the player name array. So let's go ahead and create a uStruct. It's going to be blueprint type. We struct f Nazi zombie lobby info. Where do you generate a body and create a public section for our variables? Now, first thing being the map image, I'm going to simply copy this here and include it. Next thing being the array of players. So I'm going to paste it again. I'm going to do a T array of F string and call it player list. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of edit anywhere because we don't really need it in this case. Same thing with our player array. And we need to kind of think. So we're going to have access to all of the players via the connected uh, well, every time they connect inside of our host object class. We're going to be setting this lobby info, such as the map image, from Blueprint. But we do not want to set the player list, so we do not need to write to it. So instead, we can just set it to Blueprint read only, like so. And because I'm making a new structure of a Blueprint type, I know the editor is not going to update. So I want to go ahead and close it for now and reopen it here once I compile. So I'm going to create a new protected section. Here's where I want to do all my lobby updating related stuff. So first I want to create the variable. So it's going to be f Nazi zombie lobby info and call it lobby info. Now pretty much how we're going to update it is whenever a client joins, we want to send that initial update to that client so we can create a new function of a client RPC called like update lobby info or something like that and make it take in that structure as a parameter. Then once that function runs over here, we will have that be fired as an event. So we have lobby info. Now we need to get a way to update it on the client. So if we head over to our beacon client, create a new client RBC. So it's going to be in a public it's going to be a public function, do u function, client, reliable, do void client underscore on lobby updated. I guess that'll work. And it's going to take in the structure. that we made in our host object. So we create the function and the implementation. But we want to go ahead and include 
the header inside of our Nazi Zombie Beacon client header. So we can easily access the struct because I noticed uh, declaring delegates with the struct as a parameter, it doesn't necessarily like that very much when you try to forward declare the structure. It gives you a lot of issues. So the parameter for on lobby updated is, I cannot remember what it was called, Nazi Zombie Lobby Info. Lobby Info. Like so. Now we're going to click on our implementation and create the definition. And pretty much what we're going to do is when the implementation gets fired, we are going to broadcast the delegate that we we're about to make once IntelliSense finishes whatever it's doing. There we go. So we now have our implementation to update our lobby. So now we want to create that delegate to broadcast the lobby info that we just passed in. So that's just one parameter. So I'm going to copy this here. Bring it down just so it's a little bit separate from connecting and disconnecting. Let's do F lobby updated. And for name, let's just do on lobby updated. And again, the parameter is going to be of type F Nazi zombie lobby info. Now we can simply create it down here. So F lobby updated and F on lobby updated, like so. So now we can simply do F on lobby updated dot broadcast and it'll pass in this lobby info here. So F on lobby updated dot broadcast lobby info. Simple as that. But now we need to actually call this function. So if we look over here, and on client connected, if new client actor is valid, we will go ahead and cast it. So if I want to copy the class name to save time, a Nazi zombie beacon client, I'm just going to call it client equals cast a Nazi zombie beacon client from new client actor. Then we're going to do client uh, client underscore on lobby updated. We're going to pass in lobby info, which is that new variable we made here containing the lobby info. Okay, so that's working just fine. And we have kind of everything we need created. The only thing we don't have right now is we are setting the lobby info in Blueprint. So we need a way to set it. So when we set it in Blueprint, we want to set it, set this structure here. So what I mean by setting it in Blueprint is we have, we're setting the map info in Blueprint. And that's what controls like the map images and all that kind of stuff. So we want to be able to get access to that, break it down, get the map image from that struct, which is this struct here. And we want access to this map image variable so we can store it inside of here. So we need to create a blueprint callable function to do that. So it's going to do u function under lobby info, blueprint callable, and let's do void update lobby info. The parameter is going to be the structure because it is a blueprint type. We can access it and create one in blueprint. New lobby info has the parameter name. Create the definition for it. There we go. And what we're going to do so we're going to do lobby info dot map image equals new lobby info dot map image. And finally, compile. So we're not setting the player or the player list or anything like that from the new lobby info because we want to do that strictly in C++. I mean, uh, 
inside of this class without doing anything in Blueprint because we have access to the on client connected. That means we can trigger a client RPC inside of it. I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the project real quick. We can call a client RPC on the connecting client, and in turn, that client will get their, you know, the name that they have on their machine or whatever they do, like use to set it. Send it to the server. We hit server RPC, and then we will be pretty much good to go from there. So, because that way the server will have access to the name that the client wanted, and display it. So we need to think about how we had that set. So first off, here's our beacon client, and here's where we bound all of our events. It's at the very top. Well, we want to bind another one. So client beacon, I drag off. I'm going to do um what was called what lobby updated. So on lobby updated, bind event. Let's add a custom event on lobby updated. And we're going to take the struct that was passed down and we're going to break it. So here's where we have our map image and our player list. Now we want to simply set the map image. We're not going to do the player list yet. If we go over to designer, go back here to the page and we can see our image for the lobby, that, uh, well, the map image for the lobby. The variable name is called i underscore host underscore map image. That's right here under widget infill where we moved it last. So I drag it out. I'm going to do a get. I'm going to do set brush from texture and connect it up just like so and check match size. So now, whenever this is fired, it should set the brush. And I'm going to do a print string updating lobby info on client. File and save. So great. Now we just need a way to set it. So to set the lobby info. So if we scroll down to our host, here's our host game. We create the beacon. We do all that other fancy mumbo jumbo. If it's successful, we We'll go through and we set host current map. And host current map is the current map that we have selected. So for example, if I break this, we'll see the URL, name, description, and image. So we want to break it and get the image. But we want to call that function that we made called update lobby info. And in order to do that, we need access to our host beacon object. And if you recall in our game mode, we created a getter function called get beacon host, which gets our host object that we created. So a Nazi zombie beacon host object, like so. So we need to get to the game mode. So we're going to do get game mode. We're going to cast it to Nazi zombie menu game mode and I connect it up and if it's valid oops I want to get beacon host then from the beacon host uh, I want to what's it called get um it was update yeah update lobby info and as you can see, we take in a new structure called lobby, new lobby info. So what I'm going to do is go to make Nazi zombie lobby info, that structure that we created, and link it right up. And the only parameter that we have is the map image. And that is because we set the map image to be blueprint read write and the player list to be read only. So we have our map image and we set the host current map right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the host current map. Might be an info. Yeah, host current map. I'm going to get it. I'm going to break it. And I'm going to check map info. I mean map image and the map image. And 
and clean it up just a hair. So now whenever we create the beacon, we hit on the uh, host or host game button, whatever it was called. We all our update lab info. We set the map image and all that fancy and fancy stuff. And it should set it into lobby info. There, when a client connects, we cast the connecting client to our custom class and we call our client RPC on lobby updated. And in on lobby updated, we simply broadcast that event that we created and we pass in lobby info that the server had. Once that event is fired, we should be setting the map or the map image to be equaling the map of the host, at least the very default map or whenever we actually update our map info. So I'm going to create, I'm going to host a beacon and I'm going to hit connect on the client. Updating lobby info and client, as you can see, both have this we are now seeing the map uh, the set map on the client, which is what we want. So we know we are good to go there. And we know that our update function is set up right. And the only thing that we need to do is whenever update, I actually do this in the next video. So we're, we're just going to leave it to here. So we're good to go now to continue to update We'll simply call our update function. And when we update lobby info, we want to kind of loop through all of our connected clients and update their lobby info. So anytime our host updates something in the lobby, that update will kind of trickle down to the clients as well. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. So anytime the host makes a change to the map, we're going to do the same thing on the client so the client can see that change. So. I will see you in the next one.